Kia ora team and welcome to our fifth video on Achievement Standard 91328. We are going to be looking at projectile motion throughout this video. The learning outcome for today is to be able to define and describe factors that affect projectile motion. A projectile can be defined as any object travelling through the air such as a bullet shot from a gun or a tennis ball hit by a racket. Every projectile follows a path which is called its trajectory. When we think of projectiles in sport, we usually think of objects that have been thrown or hit, such as uh, balls or, or a javelin, for example. However, the human body can also be a projectile. Think of gymnasts launching themselves into a somersault or, say, a swimmer who is mid-dive. Um, they are also projectiles. Projectiles can be affected by a range of factors. Angle of release, height of release, speed of release, spin, gravity, and air resistance are all factors that can affect projectile motion. In this video in particular, we're going to be looking at angle, height, and speed of release. The angle that a projectile is released determines the object's trajectory. All projectiles have two types of velocity, horizontal and vertical velocity. The combination of horizontal and vertical velocity results in a flight path in the shape of a parabolic curve. Greater angle of release equals a higher projectile. Smaller angle of release equals a lower projectile. The optimal trajectory is a result of an even combination of forward and upward flight. In theory, this equates to uh, an angle of release of 45 degrees. In practice, however, the optimal angle of release can vary and it's usually between 35 and 45 degrees. As an example, shot putters, um, the optimum angle of release lies somewhere between 41 and 43 degrees. However, a biomechanical study at the University of Kansas found that shot putters release their shots at an angle between 32 and 38 degrees, with a few cases reported above 40 degrees. The height of release refers to the height at which an object is released relative to its landing point. If the angle of release and the velocity remain constant, a projectile thrown from a greater height of release will travel further than one thrown from a lower height of release. For example, if a tall athlete and a short athlete release a discus at the same speed and angle, the taller athlete will be releasing a discus at a higher release point. In theory, this would mean that the projectile thrown by a taller athlete would have more time in the air and a taller athlete would be able to throw, the, throw further than a shorter athlete. The speed at which a projectile is released has an effect on how far and how long the projectile will stay in the air. If the angle of release and height of release remain constant, a greater speed of release would equal greater height and distance travelled by the projectile. Once a projectile has been released, its horizontal velocity remains constant for the duration of the flight. In sports that require projectiles to be thrown a great distance, athletes try to generate as much velocity as possible by releasing the projectile with the greatest possible amount of force. Not all sports, however, need distance, and some accuracy is more important. In those sports, the speed of release decreases and more emphasis is placed on perfecting the angle and the height. For example, basketball players attempting a free throw would slow down their throwing action, placing all their focus on technique to improve accuracy. If the same player had to beat the shot clock from well before the three-point line, their throwing action would speed up as their need for maximum force outweighs their need for precision. So that was a brief look and how angle of release, height of release, and speed of release affect projectiles. Please complete your wish sheet, come up with a really good question to share, and I'll see you in our next theory session. Cheers.